Okay, here we go again. It's another day, headed home. I actually feel like I left work today with a lot of stuff still on my plate, which is never a good feeling, but it is how I feel. And so I don't know, uh, I might, if I'm crazy enough, turn my computer on over the weekend and try and clean up all this stuff that I have hanging around, but I also might not because I'm kind of over it and I don't want to continue to have to do stuff <sighs> on my time off. So we'll see what happens, but I bring my computer home every weekend, any, well every day really, I bring my computer home every day anyway, so whether or not I actually do any work on it or do do any work on it is kind of a moot point but I at least will have it if I need it so we'll see what happens like I said I it's just like one of those days where it's like leaving work on a late note and not having everything done that I wanted to have is just not fun so oh but We'll figure it out one way or another, I suppose. And there's this Spanish musician that I quite like. Her name is Angela um, Aguilar, I think is how you pronounce it. It's kind of like Christina Aguilera, but it's not Aguilera. I think it's just Aguilar. At any rate, um, I found some of her music several years ago she released her version of La Llorona and um, I really liked her version of that song and I've been following not following her but I've been paying attention to her if you will ever since and so uh, she released a whole bunch of new music I assume an entire new album to accompany all this new music and um when she did that, she announced a tour as well, and she's going to be pretty close to home. And so I'm really very tempted to try and go see her in concert. And I was like, how cool would that be to go see a Spanish musician in concert? Because she makes like traditional Spanish music. And so I might try and rope one of my friends into going with me. I don't drive on my own. And so, I'll have to see what happens there, and if we can uh, get what we need to get out of somebody and get them to go with me. But it's just really cool to see that kind of stuff, and like, I appreciate the fact that I can live in a day and age where that kind of music is accessible to everyone because I feel like there absolutely was a point in time where like music was you only got to experience what was popular because the when it was limited to a physical media there's no point in holding up a bunch of shelf space with a bunch of stuff that people aren't going to buy and now that it is unlimited and it's just digitally available everywhere on the internet people are more likely to, oh boy, people are more likely to explore their horizons or expand their horizons and explore different genres. And I really feel like that is one of the few things that the digital age has done for music that it actually is benefiting from. I feel like the digital age, like anything, comes with a lot of pros and cons. And I think with um, music in particular, it is mostly cons. And like, I'm not one of those people who gripe about um, like electronic music versus instruments and all that good stuff. Like, I feel like there's a place for both sorts of music in this world. And to try and say that one or the other is the only one that should exist, I feel like is kind of shallow and silly. But, um, at the same time, like, I get the perspective of it, and, like, 
digital instrumentation was but the beginning but the beginning of the digital downfall of music and I feel like this might seem drastic but like the digital downfall of the entire entertainment industry like the entertainment industry is a tough industry in that it is non non essential like you do not have to have entertainment or art in your life in order to live like food and water and shelter like that's what you need to live and so people are although i think it is an indirect necessity to be entertained because a life of just not enjoying it is is miserable and depressing but people are more likely to skimp on entertainment than they are other facets of their life and they're more often gonna try and if they're gonna get something for free they're gonna try and get their entertainment for free because like if you're trying to get your food for free and you get caught like that's a bigger deal than illegally downloading a song and so the digital revolution did a lot more badly for the music world than it did well and like I would like to know when a modern musician drops a new album and they um, they drop it physically, I would like to know what those sales figures tend to look like. Because from my perspective, like, not impressive. I don't know very many people who still buy CDs. In fact, they are so much not in demand that most people are pulling them from their physical shelves entirely. Like, you go to any major retailer and you are not going to find CDs on their shelf anymore. And um, it's funny because we live in a world where you might see vinyl. Like I feel like Walmart has a small vinyl section these days and so does Target. But they don't have like any CDs. Barnes and Noble I think is like the only place that still keeps contemporary music. And um most everywhere else has just done away with it entirely and the internet radio was like the final nail in that coffin the mp3 was like the first nail like we knew it was only a matter of time before cds and all whatever physical media you were still playing with went away by the time um digital media was like becoming a thing but once internet radio came along, like, it was Dunzo Beans. And, like, one of the biggest things that... I watched this channel on YouTube called Two Cents, and they do a lot of financial videos, but they did a video about, like, music and how you should financially support the musicians that you enjoy. And one of the things that I enjoyed the most about their videos, they're like, it is not optional to financially support your musicians. Like, you absolutely should financially support them. And, um one of the things that they talked about was like a mind shift and they had a more official name for it but basically um around the time that napster and all these digital file sharing sites became a thing people's minds shifted over from like music was no longer something that you paid for and like the tough thing i think with music even from its earlier days or its heydays was like there was still probably a good crowd of people who did not buy music like you had the radio and for a lot of people that was good enough like you might buy a couple of really standout albums that you really really enjoy but for the most part you, you just didn't and like people bought significantly more music back then than they did now by a hundred million percent but um the crowd of people who listened to music for its convenience, the crowd of people who just tuned in on the radio when they wanted to hear something, they still existed back then. Um, they have grown exponentially because I think that convenience culture is what rules the day anymore. And convenience is king, and it is a whole lot more convenient to pull up your internet radio station and listen to whatever the heck you want than to dig through a bunch of CDs, cassettes, and or vinyl to listen to what you want. And like myself as a proprietor of physical media, myself as someone who spends way too much money on CDs on the regular, 
is someone I have a hard time sometimes justifying pulling out a CD and listening to it. It really depends on the mood that I am in. Sometimes I'm totally in a CD mood and I was like, I'm going to listen to these CDs now. And sometimes I'm like, I need a bigger variety than what the CDs could provide me. And like, I could break that up by making some really solid mixes and like burning up some CDs and just be like, this is, this is my mix CD now. Like I don't need to be in a mood just for one artist because I've got this CD that's got a whole bunch of them on it. And that is one avenue. Oh my goodness, that is one avenue. But I could also just, um, just as easily not um, go that route and continue to buy like proprietary factory CDs. That's my general rule of thumb. I don't do a lot of mixes for myself. Um, people might make mixes for me and that's all fine and well. But I pretty much, like, I don't display my um, mix CDs either. Like, I know my um, dad is really big about displaying his, and I'm not bashing that. But, like, you don't have artwork to go with it. They're usually in slender cases. It just, it doesn't display quite as well as an entire nook full of, like, actual CDs with artwork and all sorts of fun stuff. Like, I don't even buy compilations anymore, and if I do, for some reason, accidentally buy a compilation, I almost always throw it in a different storage facility or bin or whatever. But it is a whole different thing, and it's a thing that doesn't really exist anymore, which brings me all the way back to my sales figures, and, like, I would like to know what those numbers are. Apparently when Adele released her, what was it, 30 or 31 CD, her most recent CD, which has been a couple, a couple of years now, she's one of those few artists around where whenever she does something, like the whole world stops and takes notice. And that is a very rare thing in this day and age. Like I feel like in like the 80s and even probably somewhat in the 90s, but definitely in the 80s and below, um, like there was still artists who were captivating the world and when they did something everyone stopped and took notice and that has become very few and far between these days and she's one of the few ones especially in the terms of music she's definitely one of the few ones left who's still around and able to do that but word on the street was that her um, new album release like bumped up CD sales significantly for the month that it released or whatever. And it's awesome that she can have that much of an impact on the, on the industry that like, oh, she's about to push out a CD, CD distributors get ready because you're about to see a huge influx of people buying that stuff. And that's really cool to me. And they say that her CD actually outsold her vinyl, which is also kind of wild because everybody talks about how in vinyl is these days. Vinyl is trendy and I'm kind of waiting for it to go away because as someone who used to collect vinyl, I can, I remember I got into buying vinyl because it was being sold dirt cheaper than um, the CDs at the time. Like a brand new CD was like $15 and um, well I mean even a used CD was probably about 10 and a used vinyl you could find them for like 25 cents that's unheard of now and so that's why like I got into it initially because I was like well if it's an album that I don't care about the fact that it lists that it sounds like it's on vinyl then I will go ahead and I will buy it on vinyl and if it's something that I just have to have in the best quality available then I'll buy it on CD and it's been interesting to me because like now that has grown so much for me that I have t several different mediums that I participate in. And um, so now my actual music database, library, whatever you want to call it, I've got eight tracks recorded onto it. I've got cassettes on there. I've got vinyl on there. I've got CDs. I've got straight digital. I've got a lot of different formats and it makes for an interesting listening experience, honestly. And like, I even have 78s for my gramophone on there now. And like, it's cool because I can now like 
if I wanted to build a playlist, I could build a playlist of just like songs on vinyl or just songs on cassette or whatever. And that would be a really cool thing to be able to do. And it's just fun and fascinating for me to mess with those things and to just make them what I want to make them. And so hopefully that continues to grow and I can continue to, I dread, I rule, I dread the day that one day like CDs are officially done. And like, I feel like we're moving towards that world. A lot of mainstream retailers are even pulling like movies off their shelves now. Like Best Buy made a big thing this year where they were not going to be stocking any physical media anymore. And I feel like that's a huge, huge knock against like us and our culture and like it's unfortunate that the retailers hold that much power because like if for whatever reason retailers decide that there's nothing there's no money to be had there and they pull them from themselves then like eventually it will die like people are not going to go that much out of their way to buy something that is inconvenient to consume media on like it just does not make sense unless you're our kind of people and you like to buy those things you like to have those things you want to have the collection but as generations come after us generations who grow up never having owned a dvd never having owned a vhs never having owned a blu-ray for that matter um they will just not know any better if that makes any sense at all and like It's interesting for me because I'm trying to think of, like, things that I take for granted that I don't even necessarily notice, and I can't really come up with something, and that's probably because I don't notice that it's not there, but eventually, like, something hopefully comes and reminds these people and be like, wow, there was once a time when that was a thing. I guess one thing I could do, and this isn't like a one-for-one example, but I remember when I watched the original uh, Blob movie, and it took it. Um, I think it was released in the late it was in the late forties, early fifties, somewhere around there. Maybe it was mid fifties. Anyway, um, the guy went to call the police, and he pulled out his phone book to call the police. And I was like, "What? This guy needs a phone book to figure out how to dial nine one one." And my parents were like, well, this was before 911 was a thing. And I was like, before 911 was a thing, that's a thing? Like, I didn't even know that was humanly possible. And they were like, yeah, like, <laughs> there was a time when 911 did not exist. And that's like something that I take for granted of. It was, it was well established that 911 was a thing by the time I was old enough to know what a phone was. And so, not knowing that there was once a time, which it makes total sense when you think about it, like, yeah, at some, at some point in time, 911 had to be a thing, it's wild to think that your parents are older than 911, but, um, yeah, and so stuff like that, stuff like that, that you don't even realize was a thing until it's brought to your attention, and, like, do I all of a sudden now wish that I lived in a world where 911 didn't exist and I had to remember the phone number of my local police station? No, not necessarily. But in some other instances, maybe. Like, maybe there is someone out there who runs into um, digital me- or digital media again, whether it be CDs, DVDs, movies, who knows, and is just so fascinated and intrigued by it that they go back into doing it and like participating in it. And I think that's really cool. And they say people have an old soul and they throw that around quite a bit. And I think that there is some merit to be had there, but it's also like, I don't know if I prescribe to it fully like this. It was definitely my turn. Like, come on now, people, you're just being rude now. Um, four way stop madness. Sorry. Like literally everybody went, twice and I was like all right come on now and the only reason why I didn't go is because I couldn't because everybody that was going was all up in my way anyway physical media is unfortunately going away and I have to put on my big boy pants and accept that but I will always participate in it and enjoy it and I hope that some of you out there feel the same goodbye